just to wait here for a moment and quiet. The wonderful Holy Spirit. We surrender our hearts to you. And we fling the doors open tonight. Come in and have your way.
unless you're on your knees, unless you're on your knees, please everyone standing. It's a very holy moment, it's a very holy time. Sing that to the Lord. Again, 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 choir, help me. Jesus to touch you. If you need the Lord to touch you, keep singing, dog. Look to Jesus right now and ask him to touch you right now. He's here in a very special way tonight. If you need a healing in your body, offer your body to the Lord. If you need the fire of the Holy Spirit, ask him to fill you right now. Wonderful Jesus, fill the people now. Fill the people. Release the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep singing, keep singing. singing. Be filled. Be filled. I rebuke. Keep singing, Dami. I rebuke every sickness under the sound of my voice. Everyone. Every pain. I rebuke emotional trauma. Be free. Be free now in Jesus' name. Be free in Jesus' name. Every one of you be free. healing in your body, if you need to be set free in your mind, give Jesus your body right now. Offer him, offer him everything now. Wonderful Jesus, thank you for healing your people. Wonderful Lord. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Lord. church family. Receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Those of you watching at home, receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Receive. Receive. 
Somebody came in with pain in their hip and it's going right now in Jesus' name. Move that thing. Move it. Move it by faith. Don't even think about it. Move it by faith. Somebody had trouble breathing. It's clearing it. Keep singing down. It's clearing. It's clearing. It's clearing. It's giving beauty for ashes right now. Joy unspeakable, full of glory. Come, wonderful Lord, fill your house, fill your people, your own bride. Somebody's hip, for sure, is being touched. Go ahead and move it. Just don't, don't look at me right now. Every eye closed. Just look at Jesus. These types of moments come once in a decade for a church. We will not miss it. We will not miss it. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit, wonderful, wonderful, keep looking at Jesus, every eye closed, every eye closed, no spectators right now, all loving the Lord, all loving the Lord, all loving the Lord, close your eyes and just love Him, if you came in with a hip pain of any kind and you feel the pain is gone, I want you, there's something here, I want you to lift your hand and I need you to wave, I need you to wave. If that's you, I need your hand to actually move so I know that you're the one. That pain is gone. Yes. Thank you. Is that, that young man in the, brown, in the navy shirt. Come on. Come down here. Ushers, help me out. Help me out. Come quick. He's right there on the balcony. He's moving to the right. Keep singing. Don't, don't look at him. Don't look at him. Keep singing. Keep singing. Keep singing. Choir, I need you to back me up tonight. I know, I know you didn't know this would happen, but this is what you signed up for. And this is what we all live for. Wonderful Lord, wonderful Lord. I'm telling you, the power of God's flowing right now. Keep singing. If you had an issue breathing today and it cleared, I want to know. I want you to. I want you to wave. I need both hands to wave, so that I can see you. If you had an issue breathing and you felt it clear, you felt it clear. There in the back. Thank you, Jesus. Right there. Come, here. come, come, come. Keep singing, keep singing. Stand right here. Again, every eye closed. Sing, guys, sing. Just close your eyes. Don't worry about me. Father, fill this man. You know why he came. You know how he's been hungering. Let the fire of, lift your hands to heaven. You ask God to touch you. You do it. Father, let the fire of the Holy Ghost go right through him and use him and do a great work in his family. The whole family, do a great work. The person with that breathing problem, you had your hand up there, keep singing. Wave, wave, wave. Come forward, come forward, come forward. Wonderful Lord, wonderful Lord. Keep singing. 
Keep singing. Keep singing. Keep singing. Oh, what a work the Lord's going to do in you. What a work He's going to do in you. Right there, right there. Fill, 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 fill. Thank you for it. Thank you for it. Ben, get me five of your team. Five. Five. Put them right there. Keep singing. Keep singing. Keep five, five. Bring them right here. Five. Sing. When you sing, Jesus fills the house. Three is good for now. Move that way. Just take those two that way. Joe, help me, Joe. Dion, come on. Keep singing again. Let me hear you, dummy. Oh, Jesus, do it. Father, fill them, let them go home burning. Burning, 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 burning. Burning, 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 burning. Burning. These are our friends from Bethel. Right here, two. Come close. Fill, 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 fill. Fill. Fill, fill, fill. Fill, fill, fill. Everyone in the crowd, stretch your hands to Jesus. That's why you came tonight. Receive the wonderful anointing of the Holy Spirit. comes in moments like this and he searches our hearts he allows his glory to reveal our own desires to us because he comes and gets our attention and then he asks this question am I valuable enough for them to want me here. This is a test, church, and a reward at the same time. He's just sticking his arm in. That's what he's doing right now. He's uh, bending his ear in our direction, you see, wondering if he'll hear a cry from the heart of the bride saying, Jesus, we want you, and without you we die. That's what's happening right now. You, all you got to do is want him right now, but you, you can't want him if you're not looking at him. You can't look at your neighbor and yearn for Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Dummy. Every eye closed. Too marvelous for words. Too wonderful. Nothing. Like nothing ever seen or heard. 
Who can grasp? Who can grasp your infinite wisdom? Who can fathom? Who can fathom the depths of your love? You're beautiful. You are beautiful beyond description. Majesty. On choir, I stand. I stand, I stand. Fill me tonight with the wonderful fire of the Holy Spirit. Stand, stand Come upon her and fill her tonight. So wonderful right now, too marvelous. Too marvelous for words. Too wonderful. Too wonderful for comprehension. Like nothing. Like nothing ever seen or heard. You're beautiful. You are beautiful beyond description. Oh, pick it up a little. Majesty. Majesty in the world above. Everyone, 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 everyone. I stand, I stand in all of you. I stand. Raindrops. And I will give you a river that'll flow from your innermost being. This drink I offer you, if you drink it, you will never ever thirst again. You will never ever 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 thirst for the world again. Just begin to worship Jesus. Let your house become a tabernacle.
our prayers at church. Look at Jesus, look at Jesus. your presence. As your presence now fills this place build it slowly let's go let's go let's go worship him worship him worship him
every voice, every voice, all the glory. Open the scroll. I'd like our ushers just to help these wonderful people up who are at the altar, help them to their seats. All you guys, all the men in the front, help them up. Keep, keep, don't take your eyes off of Jesus. Don't take your eyes off of Jesus. very holy time. These are our friends from Bethel, from BSSM. They've come on a missions trip. May they go home burning with holy fire. Burning. Listen very carefully. Every head bowed and eye closed. This is not the hour or the meeting to play games with God. Jesus is in the room. His glory is tangible and real. Every head bowed and eye closed. I want you right now to ponder the reality of your salvation. The Bible says, make your election sure. Jesus is in the room and Jesus is coming back. Friends, this loving, wonderful Jesus has come in his great love to save all who are broken. All who are addicted, all who are bound by the grip of sin. 
And sin is a cruel master that will take you straight to hell. And Jesus said the wage, the payment of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ the Lord, the book of Romans says. And I know the Lord is pulling on many of you tonight to repent. Listen, to turn away from compromise. To turn away from this average lukewarm life. To turn away from going to Christian meetings and being bound by sin in between. To turn away from lesser lovers and turn to Jesus himself. I'm not sure you'll ever be in another meeting like this where the Lord is so close, so wanting to put his arms around you, and save you, and give you a new life, give you a brand new life, his own life. Jesus said, this is eternal life, that they would know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ whom you sent. Friends, hear me. Tomorrow is not promised. The Bible teaches that the Holy Spirit bears witness in our hearts that we are children of God. You can leave tonight with surety, surety, knowing that your eternity is secure. But I'm telling you, in atmospheres like this, There is only one response, and that's to give Jesus all. If you know you need to turn away from sin or compromise or average life, I want you to lift your hand up right now. Come on, let's do business with God. No games, no games, no games, no games, no games. Do business with the Lord right here. If you raised your hand or you wish you did, get out of your seat right now and get down here. Get down here. Get down here right now. Get down here right now. Listen. If you're a young child in the room right now, I want you to look at your parents. If you feel like you need to get here and tell your parents, mom and dad, get me down there. Look at this, come on, give the Lord praise. Thank you, Lord. Give him everything. Give him everything tonight. Oh, come on, church, give the Lord praise. This is wonderful. Give him everything, everything. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Look at this. It's wonderful. Baby, put your hand on that young lady right there. I said this is wonderful. Church, give the Lord praise. Oh, hallelujah. You can't say no to Jesus when he's this real. You can, but there's no reason to. Why do it? This world has nothing for you. Look, they're still coming, young and old. Young and old. Thank you, Jesus. Young and old, young and old. Hallelujah. We're in the glory of God right now. And I'm not moving on. To all you pastors in the room, to all you pastors watching me, watching right now, God can do more in His glory in getting the lost saved than 10 years of church growth strategy. And you don't get worn out doing it. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. I said, it's wonderful to be in His presence. It's wonderful. Children, if you can hear me, if you feel like you need to get up here right now, I want you to look at your mom and dad or whoever brought you. If you feel the tug on your heart, I want you to say, Mom, Dad, take me down there. I want to 
I want to give my life to Jesus. If you brought a friend and you know they need Jesus, because you know your friends, I want you to look them in the eye right now and say, I'll go down there with you. Come on, do you need to give your life to the Lord? Do it right now. Look them right in the eye. There's no one like the Lord. There's nobody as beautiful. This is the most joyful altar call I've ever been a part of. <laughs> Just filled with the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you've come forward, would you look me in the eye for a moment? Just look me in the eye. I know I turned the other way. You're like, I, I can't look you in the eye. Bring those keys down just a little. Thank you, Joel. I want you to look me in the eye. Tonight, the most wonderful exchange is about to take place. A holy exchange. You've tried the world, and if it was that great, you would have stayed there. But you've come to Jesus tonight, out of darkness, into his glorious light. This wonderful exchange literally cancels you forever on the cross. The Bible teaches that we died with him when we come to him and are buried with him and are raised with him and when we see him we shall be like him one day Jesus will never again remind you of your sin never will he bring up your past again it is truly canceled and truly gone once you repent and give your life to Jesus all the healings we've seen here are wonderful. I thank God for every one. But this is the greatest miracle tonight. Not the changing of a life, but the receiving of a new life. A brand new life. A new life in Him, where He actually becomes your life. You say, what does He want in exchange? Listen to me very carefully. He wants your life. All of it all of your life that's what he wants he just wants you and maybe you're saying as broken and disgusting as i am as broken and disgusting as you think you are he wants it give it to him this savior saves by nature it's what he does he saves the dead and brings them back to life are you ready to hand your life over Church, I want you to stand as a guarding hedge around them. I want you to stretch your hands out to or towards them. For those of you who've come forward tonight, and if at some point I'm praying and you feel like you need to get down here, this is not me trying to get more people to the altar. We, there's not enough room. But if you feel like you need to get down here while I'm praying, I want you to take that step and get down here. Get into the aisle. Do whatever you need to do. Are you ready? I want everyone who came forward to lift their hands to heaven. And church, I want you to stretch your hands to these precious people. We're going to pray out loud as a family. And everything's going to change now. Say this out loud. Heavenly Father, I have sinned against you. And I confess my sin. Please forgive me. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. Cleanse my soul. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of the living God. I believe that you came to the earth. You were born of a virgin. That you lived a perfect and holy life. A sinless life and I believe that you died on the cross and shed your blood because of my sin Jesus I believe that you were buried and I believe 
that you've been raised from the dead. You are God Almighty, the very Son of God. And Jesus, I believe that you ascended to the right hand of the Father and that you are coming back again to rule and reign forever. Are you ready? Here we go. Receive me, Lord. I yield my life to you. And I receive you as my wonderful Lord and Savior. You are my all in all. From this day forward, in Jesus' name. Amen. Heaven heard it. The Lord heard it. The Lord heard it. The Lord heard it. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Now, all of you who came forward, don't mind me. I'm just a little uh, wonderfully distracted right now. How we need the Lord's precious infilling of the Holy Spirit. Jesus promised that he would fill you, all of you, and you. It's not just one filling promise in the scriptures. Filled in Acts 2 and throughout the early chapters of the book of Acts, they were filled and filled and filled and filled again. Filled again. So those of you who've, who've come forward and those of you who are just hungry, let me just pray over you right now because the Lord doesn't need a long sermon. He just needs yielded hearts. If you're hungry, for those of you who've come forward, if you're hungry, for the wonderful, wonderful power of the Holy Spirit. Just ask, that's what Jesus said, that he would give, the Father would give those who ask. Ask, ask him, that's all. And I'm gonna agree with you. Wonderful, wonderful Jesus. You are the baptizer in the Holy Spirit and fire. And you told us that we could ask of the Father for the promise of the Father. So we can't miss on this one. On top of that, you are interceding at the right hand of the Father. So, wonderful Lord, fill your inheritance with the wonderful power of the Holy Spirit. Now, fill them, fill them, fill them, fill them, fill them, fill them. Fill everyone out there as well. Every aisle from front to back, fill them with the power of the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come and quicken them and empower them to lead the masses to Jesus and lead their families to Jesus and lead their loved ones to Jesus and their neighborhoods to Jesus. Receive. Wonderful Lord. Wonderful Lord. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. He is so wonderful. I don't know what you call this, but I'm having a revival all but all to myself, so I don't know what you call this, but this is wonderful. Those of you who came forward, would you look at me one more time? There's a few things, listen, that you need to do consistently to live a solid Christian life, a victorious Christian life. Sin is no longer your master. Don't believe the lie for a moment. Don't believe the lie for a moment. Whoever told you that you have to sin all the time, nonstop, and that's just part of life, lied to you. Jesus said he who sins is a slave to sin. We are love slaves now to the Lord Jesus, and that's it. A few things I want you to do every day. Number one, pray every day. Prayer looks like you talking to the Lord. If you get it wrong, he's not going to kill you. And if he does kill you while you're praying, what a wonderful way to go to heaven. <laughs> there are no excuses. 
It's like the worst that happens is if you think that, it's just not true. But if he does kill you, it's a wonderful way to go to glory. <laughs> go into your room, Jesus said. Shut the door and talk to your father who lives in secret. And your father will reward you openly. He'll teach you his presence in the open. Number one, pray. Number two, read your Bible every day. Your Bible is living bread. It is literally a matter of life and death. Without it, you die. With the scriptures, you live. Jesus said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds that comes from the mouth of God. Say this, the Bible is alive. It is true food. How often should you read your Bible? Every day. Every day. Number three, you need to find a people who love Jesus and live in his presence and actually connect your heart with them. That's called church. We would love to have you here. It would be our greatest honor to walk with you. It would be a joy. But if God is not leading you here, find a church that loves the Lord's presence because the Lord's presence is the Lord. Number two, find a church that loves the Bible. The whole thing. The whole thing. The whole Bible. It's better to have a pastor who says, I don't know, than a pastor who just throws it out. The whole Bible. Number four, you need to be baptized in water. We're almost like ninjas with that. We're really good. And we baptize once a month here. We would love to baptize you in water. That's not optional, by the way. It's a commandment. It is part of the Great Commission. And the scripture teaches that when you go into the water, that the world and your old life is cut off. It is a literal watery tomb. And the old man drowns to death. And you burst forth in newness of life. And the Holy Spirit is always present at a true baptism. All right. Number five, we already prayed it. You will receive power. After that, the Holy Spirit comes on you. We call this the wonderful baptism. Man, I am so filled with the Spirit right now, I can't even think straight. It is wonderful, but I'm thinking so straight. I'm not sure I want to think another way. Receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus promised it. Acts 1 verse 8, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Power to lead others to Jesus and reveal Jesus. So I already prayed that over you. I want you to live a life of being filled. I want you to go home tonight, every one of you, get on your knees in your room and say, Lord Michael said that you would release the power of the Spirit over my life. Here I am again. Give heaven no rest until he empowers you like the scripture promises. Amen? Is that simple? Now, John, come up here quick. Come here, John Reed. This is John Reed. Let him know you love him. All right, listen, 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 listen. Jesus did not tell us to go out and make altar calls. He said, go and make disciples. Disciples. That means we need to get into the nitty-gritty of life with you, and we want to do that. We want to do that for this one reason, so that you would burn and love Jesus till the day you go home to be with him. Amen? I want you to meet John after service right outside that exit sign at the New Believers table. We're going to make sure you have a Bible, make sure you get connected, and make sure you get baptized, and make sure we walk with you properly. We're not going to harass you. I promise you. But we want to see the real deal go down here. And we want you to be part of that journey. So find John afterwards. Say, I'll do it. Come on, say, I'll do it. Don't lie. Don't lie. I always say that every week. You can't lie after you get born again. It's a bad way to start. All right. Say, I'll meet him. Give me a head nod. This is important. Okay. Okay. All right. Guys, let's give the Lord praise. John, come on. Love you. Oh, come on. Give the Lord praise.
You can go back to your seats and let them know you love them. Tell them welcome home, welcome home, welcome home. Wow. Anybody doing okay? That was a wonderful greeting. Hallelujah. Choir, you stay put. I heard you got something for us. There's, this is the happiest, hardest working choir in the world. They have been standing for hours. I'm sorry, it's Jesse's fault. It's totally Jesse's fault. Hallelujah. What was that? I'm not coming down. No way. No way. <sighs> he knows our frame. We are but dust, the scripture says. Hey, baby. Or Brian. You're still smiling. Are you all ready? Is Pastor Wally here? Is he here? All right, just in a, in a moment here. Guys, this is the best time to give to the Lord. A harvest of souls. Just otherworldly worship. We're in his presence. Let's refuse to offer the Lord something that has cost us nothing. This is, these are the Jesus people. And part of being the Jesus people is being so wildly and extremely generous. And this is the reason. It's because our Father was so generous to give his own son. I love the old saying, creation cost him nothing. Salvation cost him everything. It is the, 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 the Jesus people's response in an atmosphere like this to give lavishly. I have good news for you. As of last week, we are completely debt-free on that audio gift. It all came in. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I said this morning, if you needed the 316,000, all of you would be standing. You'd be doing roundhouses, <laughs> dancing. But isn't the Lord faithful? As of last week, we needed 47,000 still, and all of you stepped up, and the Lord provided. May the Lord bless you. And isn't he faithful? That we're debt-free on that entire system, and it's about to travel the world, and we're going to take these nights all over the world, and the nations are going to be <laughs> charged with the presence of God, which, by the way, our first Jesus night on the road will be at Upper Room on May 28th. And there are a few other places I want to come. <laughs> but I, I, when we started the Jesus nights, slowly the Lord began to reveal to me that this, these needed to go on the road, bring the whole tribe, this whole singing army. These people do damage in the Spirit, trust me. If you can't preach with them behind you, you need to retire. You need to become a golfer. But let's prepare our offering tonight. Come on, let's, let's step up. We will, own, we will own our own building debt-free. Debt-free in Jesus' name. Say this out loud. Lord, thank you for our building. Our debt-free building. Say it again. Lord, Thank you for our building, Thank you for our, our debt-free building. Debt -free building. Amen. Amen. Our attorney has another meeting tomorrow with, with the officials, and so we are moving forward. Thank you, Jesus. If you'd like to give tonight, text GIVE to the number on your screen. If you're watching online, I pray that these, oh, these Sunday nights have blessed you and the Sunday mornings and the Thursdays and everything else the Lord's doing. I pray they've blessed you. And if they have, I want to encourage everyone to give. And just, can I help you guys out? Never come in to the presence of God haphazardly and not bring the Lord some measure of sacrifice. This is as much worship as any song you sing. 
So I want to invite you to step in to the nature of the Lord in this area. Amen, choir. Oh, by the way, buckets, we can put those up. If you'd like to give the old school way, uh, if you need envelopes, would you raise your hand? If you need an envelope, we have ushers out there with envelopes. All right, we've got one there in the back. Okay. Can we welcome the choir?
Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Choir, go have a seat. Pastor Wally, we love you. Thank you. We love you. Go have a seat, but stay in his presence. Go, go, go. Pastor Wally almost got decapitated by Natasha. Oh, it's already 7, 8.50. 7.50. Sorry. Who cares? Go ahead. Yeah. Aren't they alive in the Lord? They just beam it. I think we're good, guys. I love you. Let the team know you love them. You're wonderful. Jessica. Oh. Hallelujah. Well, uh, Hope McKnight, are you around? Uh, I'm going to need you, Ryan. Where, did the Lord heal you? I heard you were waving that the Lord healed you up there. What, what happened? I was just walking around serving, and I felt this pain in my right hip as I was walking, and I was like, man, that's annoying. And um, I felt like the Lord told me, he's like, I'm going to heal that tonight. And I was like, okay. And so then when he called it out and I tested it out up there, I just felt it was better. There's no pain. Like even I tested it out, there's no gone. pain. All of it's gone? All of it's gone. Why, why are you crying? You've been um, crying for the last 10 minutes. What's going on? He's just here, so... Yeah. I love you. I really love you. I love you. Hope's a, hope's a third year. And uh, two more weeks. One more week. Sorry. <laughs> what? Yeah. She's one of the uh, 72, 76. Crazy ones who said yes three years ago. Love you. She serves every week in the back and yes. takes care of all of our guests. And her and Carissa run the hospitality room. And just amazing. That her answer makes me feel like uh, Jesus' school worked. You know, it's like you can have all the other stuff, but I take tears over uh, yes. theory. And yes. she's, she's crying because he's here. Yes. A, a mission accomplished. For us, mission accomplished. I love you. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. They're wonderful. Yeah, love you. They're wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. Wondering why I'm pausing. <clears throat> One of the only ways to have the Lord's consistent manifest presence is to not know what you're doing. Not that you don't know the gospel or the word. You need to, of course. But surrender looks like not knowing 
what he's going to do next, which is a vulnerable place to be. And uh, I would, I guess, in the natural, risky with thousands of people watching. But how many of you know the Lord's not in this to make us look more dignified? In fact, us looking dignified is nowhere on his priority list. It doesn't even make the first ten pages. So, I really don't know what I'm doing. But he's wonderful. The light from his face. His healing rays, as Malachi says, the word for wings, him arising with healing in his wings. Another word is rays, healing rays. It's the basking in the light of his face that changes us. Where his, his countenance, the, the glory of his face, Jesus himself, 2 Corinthians 4, 6, the glory of God is found in the face of Jesus. And it's in that constant staring. It's when his face lights up a room. Like this, in that wonderful light of his spirit, it just starts to permeate. It gets into the pores of your being. Down to the marrow. <clears throat> this is where the Lord does the work. This is where the Lord does it. It's where the Lord gets most glory. Listen carefully. Letting the Lord do it is the way the Lord gets the most glory. The first issue is assuming to know. Yes, the Lord can show you if you spend time with Him, but well, I don't know. I spent hours with Him today, and yet he still whittles me away to nothingness when I come in. There's still a discarding of having the audacity to believe that I know everything God wants to do over the next three hours. How could I? This is life in the Spirit. This is life in the Lord's presence. And more is received right now than heard. More is, is, is consumed than heard. I know I'm probably sounding like I'm speaking Greek to you, but I understand Greek. His voice is wrapped in the very person of the Holy Spirit. And so his presence and his voice are together infiltrating the hardness of our hearts. And he just lovingly, and beautifully softens us. Jesus, we love you. Why don't you just close your eyes for a moment and just tell him, Jesus, we love you. We're going to receive communion tonight in just a few moments, and then we're going to Believe God that God will heal you. Many of you have come in from all over America. How many of you are here from another state? Would you just raise your hand and wave? Look, at, look, 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 look. It's incredible. Keep them up, keep them up, keep them up. Wave both hands. Wow. Guys, can we welcome them? Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Our prayer is that you come and meet him. You know, life is really just about staring at him the whole time. It really just is. I feel that some of you have made your responsibilities your savior. Even your church responsibilities, your ministerial responsibilities, pastors, leaders, ministers. Don't try to build the church you were never called to build. 
Jesus said, I will build my church. And the church that he builds is not defeated by hell. The gates of hell will not prevail. I want to release a, uh, I guess, somewhat prophetic word. <clears throat> How many of you know the whole Bible is prophetic? Take your Bibles to Matthew 5. Stay in the Spirit and turn your phones off. I don't know. Stay in the Spirit. See, we don't understand the power of our thoughts in atmospheres like this. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. Never underestimate the power of attention. The power of attention. Two people can sit next to each other. One can be literally aware of the world and hell. The other one can have her mind on the, on the Lord himself. One is literally experiencing heaven. The other is experiencing the lies of the devil. As a man thinks in his heart, so he is. In other words, his reality, the reality of his life, depends on how he or she thinks in the heart. Not just what, but how. How. Attention, listen carefully. If we're going to do this together, and I consider this a life assignment, my plan is to die pastoring you. Okay, not while I'm preaching, but that'd be wonderful, to be honest with you. It's better than that than, I mean, number two would be playing at Augusta National. And by the way, if there are any Augusta members watching... I would, I would make you proud. I do that because uh, you never know. Let it be so. Let it be so. Attention is gasoline. Mm -hmm. Distraction is water on a flame. When it comes to living in the presence of God, and this is my life assignment here, there's just the greatest place in the world to preach, in my opinion, on the planet. There's nowhere else I'd rather preach than to you. I love you, and this is special, and I consider it the, I can't believe that I get to do this. I cannot believe it. There's seven billion other people who the Lord could have asked to do this. I pinch myself. I can't believe I get to do this and be in this room. This is the greatest place in the world to preach. It's, if, if you can't preach here, you need to quit. I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's special. When I come in, my heart starts beating. What would the Lord do? Tonight, you guys started singing before the worship set started. That's a dream come true. It's a dream come true. It means that, that you're breaking out of any performance-driven lead me. In my, I don't need anyone to lead me in worship. That's what's happening, is you're taking ownership as a priest of the Lord. You're taking your position. Maybe you don't see it like that, but you're taking your position, standing your post, keeping your post, saying, Jesus died for me, therefore I can sing to him. Today, tonight was a literal dream come true, a reward from the Lord to me to hear you singing before we came out. And before, as I was driving here, I, I knew something would hit the room without music. I told Don that when I got on the platform. As Jess and I were driving here, I began to see in the Spirit that without music, you guys would start ministering to the Lord. And, I, I, and I'm, sh I'm shocked and thankful. I'm so grateful. So that being said, we're going to have to move together in His presence. We're going to have to Follow the cloud together. Because this will never be about Michael. I mean, my Lord, you just experienced two hours of worship. I didn't play the most, just the smallest role in that whole scenario. This is not about me. It's not about Jess. It's not about Jesus' image. It's about the Lord Jesus. It's about Him. 
So this is, this is our mandate, to live with him. So we have to learn. We have to learn what, what disconnects us from the reception of his presence and then what increases the tangibility of his presence. Well, what is it? well one of the quickest ways to lose, and well, that's why every once in a while you'll see an usher ask you, guys, please stop doing this or whatever. It's not to be mean. It's that we are moving in one accord. It's one of the principles of the word. There's a time, that obviously, we're not too tamed here. You've figured that out by now. The choirs, like I, the choir, they're from Narnia. They're all a little <laughs> out there. Totally, I understand. There's a time for that, but there's also a time where everything moves together. This is being in one accord. This is what pulls on heaven. This is what draws on the Lord himself. The opposite of that is distraction. And it's not to say the Lord leaves, it's, but it is to say that it can limit your experience with the Lord. What does the Scripture say? I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. I will keep him in perfect peace What's the condition? Whose mind is stayed on Jesus. Jesus is jealous of your thoughts. He wants you to think about him a lot. So we have to learn to move together. And it is the Lord's nature to increase His presence, to increase His glory. And I'm believing for the day that when people break those doors, they will sprint to the altar, desperate to be born again. There was, I'm believing for the day that people will start getting saved and healed in the parking lot. Before We've had that. We've had that. We've had cysts disappear in the parking lot in line I, and, and in our meetings in Ohio, I've seen it. I have, I, 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 I have smelled the very fragrance of Jesus in our meetings in Chicago until people outside smelled the fragrance and literally followed it in to one of our meetings in Chicago. There is more, church. I'm grateful, but hear me. There is more. It's not about the wonders. It's about Jesus feeling free enough to express himself with a trusted people. That's what it's about to me. It's not about the, the specificity of each wonder and what it looks like and how cool it is. No, that's not it to me. It's, Lord, are you comfortable enough here, like you were at Bethany, to recline and show us a part of you? You don't show the masses. Are you hearing me? Matthew 5, 3, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those, listen carefully, who are internally hungry. Do you know why most people miss their experience with the Lord because they don't think they need one. And if you don't think you need one, you choose to do it on your own. There's another word for that. It's called pride. Jesus makes a promise here. Blessed are the poor in spirit. This isn't speaking about social poverty. The Lord obviously has a heart for those who are poor in the natural resource, of course. In fact, there is a side of Jesus you will only find if you get around the poor and help them and be a light. Heidi taught me that. She said there's a side of Jesus you'll never discover until you go serve the poor, how right she is. But this is another poverty that I'm talking about. This is what we call internal poverty, the hunger of the soul. The hunger of the soul. 
It's the soul that screams for more. It's the soul that would rather die than not have the Lord touch them. That spirit. Ooh, it's special. The promise is the kingdom of heaven. The ways of God, the arrival of God in a life. The rule of God given to a person who's hungry for God. Now, let me tell you as your pastor, all eyes on me. Everybody look at me. Don't talk to your neighbor right now. Don't talk to your neighbor, you need to leave. This is a holy time. I don't give a rip. When we're in His glory, we pay attention to Him. Do not treat this lightly. There are people who give their blood, sweat, and tears to do this. They've given all. People vacuuming these floors, people praying and fasting. Our team's on another 21-day fast. So respect, don't you dare for a second sit and chop it up with your neighbor. If you want to talk to your neighbor while Jesus is in the room, it's your fault. You need to go. I love you, but this is the best way to love you. Do not treat him as common. He is the king of glory. Say, Michael loves me. Say it again if you need a sozo. Say, Michael loves me. hunger for God. I want to say something as, as, as your pastor. This church is going somewhere right now. I feel it in the spirit. I told the Sunday morning group this morning that it was time to take the cross, the precious cross. And by the way, the cross has not lost an ounce of power. <laughs> Demons tremble at the sight of an old rugged cross. When we close our eyes, this is what you will lean on, the work of the cross. Jesus who bled and died. One day you'll go Close your eyes and be absent from your body. Be present with the Lord because of the work of the cross. It's time for us as a people to take the work of the cross, listen carefully, and insert it into a moment of favor. Listen up. If you don't take the cross right now, if we don't, together, if we don't take the cross in the midst of all God is doing and plant it dead smack in the middle of what the Lord is doing, what he's doing will become more important than Jesus to us. There's only one way to keep that from happening. It is to deny ourselves, to take up our cross and follow Jesus. We have to do it now. As a people, hear me. This is a prophetic word for us as a people. We have to put our hearts back on the altar and not wait until things dry up to do it. We have to do it now or things will dry up. And I don't want them to dry up. The rebellious dwell in a dry land, the scripture says. I don't want to live and do church the way the world does. So I know of no other way than to have consistent life here, and that is to consistently have the cross. How do we do that? We have to ask the Lord to disturb us. Gosh. Bill came through, Bill came through a few weeks ago and shared a prophetic word that came to their leadership. The word was they had gotten in some ways, too civilized. It hit me. 
when he said that here? Too civilized. Ah. What's that look like? It just looks like doing meetings. It looks like replacing fasting and prayer with watching YouTube. Christian videos on YouTube. You become too civilized when you watch Jesus' image instead of looking at Jesus. Uh, I'm glad you watch. Don't get me wrong. But nothing replaces staring at the Lamb. Nothing. We, we have to hear the mercy of the Lord here. He's, he's actually coming in to safeguard us. We have to do it now. I don't know about you, but when we get our building, I'm going to weep and cry. I might live there for a month and never leave. I might just be the janitor, the preacher. I love landscaping now. I don't even know why. I'm really into flowers. I just bought four massive bogan villas. Yeah, weird. I had John come plant some trees. I don't know what's going on. Uh, Stephen Gretzinger goes, oh, you're turning into like Martha Stewart. I, I don't understand either, Okay. But I might just be the landscaping guy. And then I, we have a retention pond. I'm going to stock it with fish, as you know. And I'm going to be the local, the resident fisherman as well. well something, we're going to all weep when we get to the building. But may we never become civilized. May we never forget the, the offering of vacuuming. And you precious students who clean those bathrooms every day. We, we bought the carpet for this church and put it in. We don't even own the building. Your giving helped make it possible. It's that kind of thing. It's you, you coming in and never thinking it's a waste of time to sing to the Lord. It's you believing that he hears every single word. Do you hear me? And now I feel the Lord again. I'm telling you, I feel fresh invitation to come and die. To come and die. What did the Pharisees do when they mocked Jesus? Come off the cross. If you are who you say you are, in case you have an identity crisis, perform for us and get off the cross. You leave the life of the cross, you will turn into the next greatest act in the Christian world. You call it preaching, it'll become performance. You call it wisdom, it, call, it, it becomes about filling seats, not saving souls. It becomes about filling seats so that we feel better about our own egos. So we feel more accomplished. No, 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 no. It's not about getting people in the room. It's about getting Jesus in the room and then he invites whoever he wants. He invites whoever he wants and people come to Jesus, they always have. They've always come to Jesus. Everything the Lord does is seasonal. And before more life is added, death must come. Death must come. If it's about the season, something must die to be fully alive on the inside. When is a tree most beautiful? When do the leaves start dying? When death sets in. When do the leaves change color? When death sets in. That first winter breeze. It's what we call fall. We don't know it's fall. Listen, we don't know it's fall when the leaves change. We know fall is coming when the first, hear me, you're going to have to interpret this by the Spirit. We know it's fall when the first breeze shifts. That first cool breeze. I'm here to tell you as your pastor tonight, the winds have shifted. The winds have shifted. And guess what? I'm going with the wind. You, if you don't want to go with the wind, that's fine. I pray you'll come. But you might just get left behind. This house is going north. We're going with the wind. I want you to come. I just want you to know we're not slowing down. I need somebody in the room to put their heart on the altar again. Thank you, Lord. This
disturb us. Disturb us. Get underneath us, Lord. And shake. Shake everything off the tree that needs to leave. Get just disturb us. Disturb us, Lord. Do something in us. By your mercy, grab us. Blessed are the poor in spirit. The poor in spirit. The ones who aren't convinced that God is giving them just everything all at once. That there's more in the account that they haven't accessed. That there's more of his face and more of his beauty. And disturb us. Get up into our systems and what we do and why we do what we do and our sets, our song sets and our sermons and our conferences and our gatherings and the way we build church and the way we disciple people, the way we uh, run our families, disturb us. Disturb us. I'm, I'm shocked by how many parents wonder why their children don't love Jesus it's because you don't love Jesus. That's not the only reason, but I'm shocked by how many parents who come to me and say, my children don't spend time with God. My question is, do you? Do you spend time with Jesus? Are you the priest of your home? Are you up before your children waiting on the Lord? Have you discovered the truth that you are a literal pre priest who can broker the presence of God into the four walls of your house? Never shortchange what goes on in that prayer closet. Your children don't even know it, but his presence gets on them while they're sleeping. It changes their attitudes. Bill used to tell me, get your kids in the glory. It'll rewire them. Disturb us, Lord. Disturb our nights. Disturb our mornings. Disturb our sermons. Disturb the way we write songs and why we write songs and why we choose the songs we write. Lord, kill every idol. Kill it all. Kill it all. Just do something in us. I'm here to tell you now. Listen. If we put our hearts on the altar, God is sending his fire. I'm telling you right now. God is sending his fire. It is conditional. This morning and tonight were a reward and a test for the Lord to come as he came tonight. It is the reward and the test at the same time. His glory is the diagnostic and the cure. It reveals what needs to go and it heals what needs to go. It's his presence. That's what he did to Moses. That bush caught on fire, and he waited, the Bible says, for Moses to turn aside and see. The Bible says he looked and then saw. You'll never see until you first think God is worthy enough of taking a look. If God's not worth our look, we will never see. Jesus came tonight. He's filled the room with his presence. I have this sense in my spirit that the Lord is bending his ear toward Jesus' image. Wondering if he will hear a cry from the depths, the inner recesses of our being, saying, Lord, live with us. Come and live here. We have no other reason than to have a church, Jesus, than for you to come and live with us. This is what the Lord is saying. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed. That word implies presence, the blessing of his presence. There is a blessing that is wrapped in the presence of God that belongs to those who want Jesus over and over and over and over and over and over again. And his kingdom is promised. His kingdom manifests. That looks like sickness leaving. It looks like the lost being saved. It looks like peace coming to a scattered soul, to those who are struggling in the mind. It looks like everything being made right. It looks like the king dominating what is not of him in your life. That's what's promised to the hungry. Well, how do you become hungry? By feasting on the Lord. 
the, the river inside of us doesn't spring forth like a fountain. Don't miss this one. I'm going to end here. It does not spring forth like a fountain until you drink. Oh, you've got to get this. See, you wanted to move before you drink. And the devil wants us to believe that. Jesus said a pool would be given to us, a reserve, a, a pool of living water would be given to us when we come to him. But the scripture teaches that it's those who drink that experience that pool becoming a fountain. You want it to move. Turn away from the world and have a drink of his presence. That's how it springs forth. Not by marching and not by so-called intercession, though that's incredibly valuable and needed. No, this is something very different. It's you expressing to the Lord that he is worthy of your attention and a drink. You give the Lord your affection, realizing he lives within you. You turn your awareness inside where he is and worship him and adore him. And in that moment, that pool becomes a fountain. And when that fountain starts moving, you can't help but have it overflow. People will find you. Your voice will sound different. There will be a, a moisture on your tone. There will be an authority that's just not normal. That's what happens when Jesus comes. It's where we're going, friends. I said it's where we're going, friends. I realize this is heavy. I realize it. And I, I realize it's probably hard to hear a correction come. But in the glory of God, everything matters and nothing, nothing turns the Lord off more than people talking to each other rather than looking at Him. There is a way to be in the glory. There is a way. There is a way to not live in His presence, and that is to look elsewhere. And when He comes, we have to, listen, build a reputation before heaven, collectively, as a church family, when you come, we hit the red button, everything stops. We have to prove that to heaven. See, we want in the courts of heaven, in the corridors of heaven, we want it to be said of Jesus' image right down there in Orlando, Florida. When the Holy Spirit fills the house, they showed their appreciation by doing nothing but worshiping Him. We want that. We want that. We, we need that. We, we want to build that reputation. Bethany had that reputation. Jesus knew where to stop to get his feet washed. We want that here. Am I talking to anyone? We, we want that here. We want Jesus to feel like he can come have his feet washed here. With our tears right here. May we cry more than we debate. May we weep more than we want to be heard. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Do I have your agreement? It's going to be glorious. It will be filled with testing, but it will be glorious. Regardless of the tests, we know our Redeemer lives. And He's worth every test. Father, may it be said here that we love you. May it be said we are addicted to Jesus. May it be said that Jesus lives there. And what else, whatever else you want to do in addition, wonderful. But may it be said of this house, we love you. Say amen. amen. Do you all have your communion elements? Babe, would you come? You can come with me. I'd like Carla and Ryan to come as well. I want you to find, without talking, I want you to find a few people to take communion with right now. If you came alone, I want you, if, if you see someone sitting alone, I want you to find them right now. Just say hi, don't do it in tongues. Say it in English. Let's come together now as a family. Husbands and wives, take it. If your children are here, receive it with your children.
What a night. What a blessed night. What a blessed night. As you're getting ready, just close your eyes and begin offering the Lord your heart all over again. Ben, why don't you and Jordan come, bud? You guys just come up. Come on. Just stand here with us. Thank you, Lord. I may the Lord just tangibly touch you and the team. And may, may, may you drip with the presence of God when you get back to Reading. And may you be a deep encouragement to Bill and the team. The few things are greater than when sons and daughters refresh us. It's a wonderful, wonderful blessing. May it happen, Father. Oh, listen to the words of Jesus. I love this part. Luke 22, 14. When the hour had come, he and the 12 apostles with him sat down. Don't you love that this meal is received in rest? It's received in rest. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. What a loving Jesus that before he would suffer the worst death in the history of mankind, he had fellowship on his mind. A meal, oneness, union. For I tell you, I will never eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you, I will not drink the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And then he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I want you to remember that. In like manner, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. But see, the hand of him who betrays me is with me at the table. Indeed, the Son of Man goes as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. They began to inquire among themselves which of them would do this. Tonight, none of us come aimlessly to the table. None of us come without faith. The gospel was preached in clarity. Tonight, everybody here had the opportunity to receive the Lord Jesus and enter into God's family, the very body of Christ. So tonight, we come as a family to the table of the Lord, and it's proper to believe that He eagerly desires to celebrate with us as well tonight. That there is an excitement in the heart of Jesus in light of all the craziness going on around the world. There's a table here. Jesus knows the feeling. All Jerusalem wanted to kill him, yet there was a table there. And today the world is at enmity with the Lord, but there's still a table. So we come to the table tonight, and if you have sickness in your body, if if you have a broken heart, The Bible says he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Whatever is broken in you, I want you to bring that to the table tonight. Like Mephibosheth sat at David's table, bring your crippled brokenness to the table tonight. Whatever it looks like, cancer, bring it to the table. Arthritis, bring it to Jesus tonight. At the table, the place of fellowship. Any sickness, bring it to the table. Discouragement, bring it to the table. Let's receive together. Take the bread, would you please? Jesus, you said, this is my body, which has given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Tonight, precious Lord, as we lift the body, we break it together. Break it. Because your body was torn and broken. We remember 
as you commanded us. The wound on your side. The wounds in your hands. The wounds from the whip on your back. The wounds on your feet. The wounds on your brow from the crown of thorns that purchased the mind of Christ for us. That wound on your side was a door to your heart. And it birthed the church with water and blood. We remember your rest. And we remember the beard being plucked from your face. We remember Psalm 88, that your eyes wasted away due to affliction. We remember that they beat you and slapped you, oh precious Lord, and spit upon you. And you gave yourself to the torture that it might be done as the Father purposed in His heart for us. We remember your stripping naked and being whipped at the whipping post to purchase our healing. We remember the crown of thorns being beaten into your skull with a reed. We remember the robe of mockery that you traded with heaven's robe that filled the temple with glory. We remember you carrying the cross on your back that had been literally skinned. We remember you walking Golgotha to your own death, carrying your own cross. And you said, no man takes my life, I lay it down. We remember them lifting you. Oh, look at Jesus now. We remember them lifting you on the tree, suspended between heaven and hell, cleansing, cleansing and redeeming purging and purifying, God certainly provided the lamb. We remember Abraham's words to Isaac, the Lord will provide the lamb. Certainly he did. We remember your suffering, Lord. And now I pray in Jesus' name that as we receive the precious body of Jesus, that every sickness, physical, mental, emotional, family sickness, every condition and disease would be driven out by the power of the body of Jesus Christ. We receive by faith tonight in Jesus' name. Receive by faith. You in your homes, please receive communion with us. Receive your healing. Would you take the cup and open it, and when you do, just lift it. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. Wow. The covenant of the Lord lives in the blood. The power of the covenant lives in the blood. And it's been shed for us. Thank you for the blood that literally came out of your pores in Gethsemane. What a loving Savior. What a loving Jesus. What a wonderful Lamb who came to bleed. So tonight we apply the blood by faith with the hyssop of our faith. And we declare that we overcome tonight by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And our testimony is this, that the Lamb has overcome. He bled and died. Jesus is King. And so tonight I plead the blood over your families, over your children, over your churches, over us, over your businesses, your ministries, your bodies and your minds, I plead the blood by faith 
I apply it by faith, the faith of hyssop. Two doorposts and the lintel of your life be, be covered in the blood of Jesus. Now, Father, we ask you to forgive our sin. Wash us as you promised. This blood is shed for you. For the remission of sin. Without the shedding of blood, your word says there can be no remission. We plead the blood. Wash us. Cleanse us. Cleanse our consciences tonight. Purge us. Purify us and protect us. Thank you for the blood of the Lamb. Would you just say that? Thank you for the blood of the Lamb. Received by faith tonight. Give Jesus your attention. Just keep your eyes fixed on him. Hallelujah. 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 You guys can go sit. Hallelujah. Oh, can you just lift your hands just gently? Just thank the Lord. What a wonderful Jesus to be in covenant with. Would you just keep your eyes closed there for a minute? If you feel in your body sickness, disease, and pain, if you, if you have an issue right now in Jesus' name, in His presence, I just want, I want you right now to look at the person next to you if you're comfortable and just say, would you put your hand on my shoulder and agree with me? Or if you have a sickness in your body that you need the Lord to heal, just wave, wave, wave at me quickly. Okay, keep those hands up. Now, if you're next to somebody, just very, we have to stay with the Lord here. Stay with the Lord. Don't look around very long. Put your hand there on that person. If, if they're okay with it, say, may I just pray for you? Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Oh, wow. Praise you, Jesus. Right now, just receive your healing. Father, in Jesus' name, put your hand there on their shoulder. Tell that thing to go. Everybody, everybody here in the room, tell that thing to go. Right now, tell it to leave. Tell it to go right now. Father, in Jesus' name, we come into agreement that by the stripes of Jesus, every sickness goes. We declare that by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. As many as touched Jesus were made well. Lord, your word says that when they received the Passover meal in the book of Exodus, that there were none feeble among them. Chronic fatigue, go now. Not only were there none sick, there were none feeble. Weakness, go in Jesus' name. All weakness, shortness of breath, leave now in Jesus' name. Take a deep breath. If you've been suffering with chronic fatigue, it leaves now. It leaves now. Jesus' name. Those of you who came out of town because you needed the Lord to heal you, He's okay with that. Move your body. Move your body. Do something. Do something. Do something. Do something. Do something. If you had a pain in your body, I want you to not look for the pain right now. I want you to test it and look for your healing. Move, 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 move. Do something. Do something you couldn't do. Do something you couldn't do. Church, I want you to pray in the Spirit here for about the next 30 seconds. Unless you're receiving a healing, unless you're receiving a healing, you do not have to pray in the Spirit. But everybody else, I want you to pray in the Spirit. Move, move, move. Do something. Act in faith. Move your head if you have to. I give you glory. And when you feel, listen, when you feel that pain leave, when you feel the symptoms go, I just want you to lift your hand very quickly and start waving. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Here they go. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. There's another one. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to need you, Ryan. Come on. Here we go. Here they go. Come on. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying in the Spirit. If you don't need a healing, pray in the Spirit. I'm telling you, I feel the authority of God flowing. The moment you feel the symptoms go, I want your hands up and start waving. And there they go in the back. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Every sickness. Now, if they didn't get the breakthrough, go after it again right now. Tell it to leave. Don't play games with this thing. Tell it to go. Don't play games with it. We're not counseling the sickness. Tell it to leave. In Jesus' name, every pain, every arthritis, even in the knees, it goes now in the name of Jesus. 
Heartburn. Oh, that's wild. I've never called that out. Go now in Jesus' name. Indigestion. Go in Jesus' name. Ryan, where are you, buddy? That girl there in the back with her hands up. Go quick, quick, quick. Oh, Jesus. You watch what happens now. Hold on, hold on. When she starts sharing this testimony and these testimonies start taking place, don't you give up. Keep offering your body to the Lord. Just receive like a child. What happened? Um, so I was hit by a drunk driver a couple years ago, and my three lowest discs are herniated, and it was... A lot of pain like all day today I've been in church earlier today sitting and weren't you baptized here a few weeks yes ago? yeah I remember you it was amazing what happened tonight he has laid his hands on me and I feel no pain in my lower back no pinching how how <laughs> how long have you been in pain um, <laughs> how long have you been in pain Every day. For every how day. many years? Just about two and a half, three years ago now. And this is the first time in two and a half or three years that you've been pain free? I feel nothing. It feels okay, numb. Okay, when, when, wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. When did you feel the pain leave? As soon as these lovely people put their hands on me and I felt the heat of the Holy Spirit coming into my spine Praise and exploding outwards and it's just, <laughs> it's filling me up now. <laughs> Wow. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I, I, I feel the Lord wants to touch some of your hearts, your physical hearts. Your physical hearts. Like you've had a tightness and a heaviness on your chest. Let the Lord do it. Just offer the Lord your body. You know, if, if you came to Jesus in the flesh, you wouldn't have had to beg him. He wants to heal us more than we want to be healed. You just say, Jesus, heal my heart. It's that simple. It's that simple. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Wave, uh, lift your hand if you were. Yep, yep. What, lay, uh, lift your hand. If, there's one there. What happened? He'll hold it. He'll hold it. Go well, ahead. two years ago, I was run over in Oakland, Florida, and for the last two weeks solid, I've had a lot of increased nerve damage and a lot of nerve pain that would not stop bugging me to the point I was going to have to either A, go to the hospital tonight to get gabapentin to kind of kill the nerve damage, but the nerves have decided to stop tingling and I feel just so much better and Thank I can you. bend when, a lot more. When did more. that happen? That happened May 5th, 2019. No, no. Okay, 19 you got hurt. Direct, when yes. did you feel the nerve dim the nerves Tonight, change? After these brothers and sisters were touching me and I just knew the nerves needed to calm down and it's finally back to normal. How long has it been since you felt this good? Um, it's been at least a good three weeks. Wow. If not more. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And over there, somebody had their hand up over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ryan, get over there. He's coming. Look at his dreadlocks. Yeah, I've had like back pain on my back of my neck for years and it's gone. When did it leave? When Sydney put her hands on me to pray. Wow. <laughs> so she put her hands on you and it left. Thank you, Father. Oh, Jesus. You're wonderful. You're wonderful. You're wonderful. You're wonderful. You're wonderful. Isn't the Lord wonderful? Yeah. I want to take two more. I want to take two more. Wave your hands. Wave your hand if the Lord touches you. Yeah, yeah. Actually, Ryan, take that one. I feel like that one. You need to get that one. Yeah, he's coming. He's coming. Oh, poor Ryan. Let me get you some spandex for these meetings. Get him a nice, uh, some Lululemons. All right. What happened? Well, usually during my school, I How usually... How old are you? 12. What's your name? Lilia. Lilia? 
Okay, I, I just wanted to hear that. Go ahead. So usually during my school, I usually like sometimes I have like back pain. And um, my mom just like prayed for me right now dur when you told us to like put put our hands on like our on our shoulders. And I and, I, and it pretty much just went away. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> That's so good. So wonderful. Is there anyone else in this section? Anyone else in this section? Yeah, I felt, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right there, the pink. Your hand wasn't up before. Yeah, I had it oh, up I'm several sorry. times. Though. <laughs> I yeah, felt yeah, like yeah. there was uh, something in this section that needed to be heard. What, yes, what? I come in. Really Where are you from? I am from Georgia. Georgia. Yes. Did, uh, do you live in Georgia? Uh, yes, I do. And my girlfriend. And did you guys from, drive all the way down from Georgia? Uh, yeah, she's from Rhode Island. And she we, what? She's from Rhode Island, my friend. And you came from Rhode Island? Uh huh. And Just she's actually here? been here several times, so she invited me to did come. Did you come so. to come here or to go to Disney or something? One of the reasons is to come here. Wow. That's so <laughs> Actually, humbling, she said church. That this place so humbling. Is the only place she really wanted what to happened go to you? I have been really having like just excruciating pain in my knees. Uh huh. And tonight it's like that pain. I mean, even with through worship, I just had to keep sitting down because I was in pain. Uh -huh. But it's really, it's gone. The pain is really okay. gone. Okay, do something you couldn't do. <laughs> oh, you're doing I it. Doing Sorry, I can't see your legs. <laughs> what? What? Um, Was it, was it arthritis? I've never been diagnosed with anything. It hit like probably about six weeks did ago. Did I call, not call knees out of kind of nowhere? Uh, um, I think yeah, I did. I, yeah, um, I yes. think I did. Yes, because she laid hands on me about the time you did that. She said, yeah, you said, he's calling knees. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, because she knew that's why I come. Well, you're going to go back to Georgia all healed. I am. In Jesus' name. Yes. Praise God. Is there anyone else in this section? Yeah, yeah, I knew it. I knew it. This is the way it goes. Yeah, this is a river. When you give the Lord worth and you worship Him, He continues moving. What, what happened? Hi, so um, I've just like, this week I've had this like heaviness and I've just been like on my chest all week. I've hardly been able to breathe. I feel like I've been so overwhelmed by just life. Uh -huh. And um, I've had that. tonight I just like, I came in and I was trying to worship and I was like, man, like this is really distracting. And so I just like kept trying to push through and then you just said about like the heaviness and I immediately like I just felt, yeah in the chest and yeah. it just like completely lifted and I felt like I could breathe again. Like I felt like I didn't have to Come really on. struggle to breathe, like it was just happening. Lana, I'm glad you're crying. Another thirty are crying. They've been whittled away to tears after three years. Oh, can we lift our hands? Jesus, thanks. Now, if you've been healed and we didn't get to your testimony, um, I want you to email. What do they email? <laughs> I ask that every week. Carla's like, they email testimony at jesusimage.tv. If you've been healed and we didn't get to you, listen, it's vital you share your testimony. It's vital you send it in. I want to build a library of testimonies that glorifies the Lord and really, really kicks the devil in the mouth for the generations to come and see it. Amen? Amen. Hey, ben, would you come? I'm going to have you close. This is my dear friend Ben Wilson. He's a pastor from Bethel. He's a dear, dear brother. He's a dear brother, and yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when, we, when we lived in Reading, Ben was one of the first crazy pastors to say, would you come preach to my revival group at BSSM? And he would have to get clearance from certain people named Leslie, and, and uh, he'd have me in and was always so supportive and so honoring and uh, just been a dear friend. He and Joe are wonderful, some of our dearest friends. So 
Let's all stand and let's receive just a prayer of blessing before we dismiss. And then, uh, babe, I'm going to have you come up. And then when he's done praying, I want you to pray uh, that God would drench the whole team in his glory. And let's pray a blessing back over. Shouldn't we believe, church, that they're going to go back to Reading just burning? So why don't you come up, baby? You pray first. Come on, let's receive this. Let's receive this. Thank you, Jesus. King of glory, Jesus Christ, lifted up, resurrected, ascended, glorified King. Oh, what a joy it has been to waste our souls on you tonight. What a joy it has been just to look at you and love on you, to be distracted by you. Jesus, the service might be almost over, but we're only just getting started. We can't get our eyes off you. You're so beautiful. You're so wonderful. Yes. You're so incredible. Oh, you're so captivating. Oh, you're so worthy of our attention. Jesus, I thank you for what you're doing in this house. I thank you that you've literally stepped into this room. Thank you, Father. As we praise you, you literally enthroned them. Oh, Jesus, how humbling it is. That's not just the scripture, that's real. When we praise you, you actually come in. You actually inhabit our praises with yourself. I thank you that you've walked down every aisle tonight. You've been walking to and fro, right throughout us, touching us. Loving us, changing us, transforming us. Jesus, I thank you for what you've done. And Holy Spirit, I just ask that you would confirm that with your manifest presence, not just together in the sanctuary of the Lord, but that we would walk out of this place as sanctuaries of the Most yes. High God, that you have taken up residence on the inside of us. And I thank you that as we go, we carry that Christ with us and we carry that Holy Spirit inside of us and he can't help but leak out of us and yes. transform our business, transform our schools, transform yes. our families, yes. transform everything that we put our hands to. And so Holy Spirit, we just ask, thank you, first of all, that you've filled us, that you've come tonight. But we ask, Lord, that you would not have the high water mark in the sanctuary, but like Ezekiel 47, that the river would get deeper the further that we go from this yes. place. I ask that the watermark would grow yes. in Orlando, in Jesus' yes. name, simply because we left, because we came, we met with the Lord. He showed up and He filled us, yes. that the watermark of your presence yes. would increase in this city because we met with the Lord. And you came and you showed up, and you are who you say you are. So with faith, and hunger and expectation, we believe that not only are we forever changed because we've met with you, yes, Lord. but every life that our life touches will be forever changed because you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's stretch our hands towards Ben. Just thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Yeah, team, why don't you guys, come on, Bethel, you guys come over here. Huh? Uh, we can just do like half there. Just spread them out across. We'll get the whole church to, to stretch their hands. That's 40. That's fine. We'll figure it out. Just spread out way, 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 way over there. Don't we love them? Yeah, you can wrap around the corners there just to make a little room. There we go. All right. Come on, let's all just stretch our hands and let's release a blessing. Um, so hmm? before I start to pray, I was reminded, Ben, when I had uh, my first face-to-face -face encounter, you were with me. You and Steph were praying over me. It was when BSSM and Jesus School came together. That's what I want to pray and Todd School was there as well, and I had my first face-to-face -face encounter with Jesus, and I couldn't get off the ground. 
for seemed like forever. That's what I'm gonna pray that God does in your life as well. So Jesus, I just thank you, God, that you will baptize these students, Jesus, with your glory. Jesus, I thank you that they will see your face, Jesus. Lord, I thank you that you will whittle away every other lover that has ever come in their life, Jesus, where all they will see is you, Jesus. Burn them up, Holy Spirit, from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. Burn them up. Let fire fall on their life in Jesus' name. Fire fall. Come on, church. Fire fall in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, for the fire of the Holy Spirit to touch them in Jesus' name. Permeate their life in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, for baptizing them, Jesus, with your fire, Jesus. Let them never be the same in the name of Jesus. Let this take them, take this home to Reading, Jesus. Bless Bill and Benny Johnson, Lord. Bless the, bless the leaders at Reading, Lord. I thank you, Father, that they're going to take this fire out in Jesus' name, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, that only you will remain in their life in Jesus' name. Only you, Jesus. I thank you, Father, that the fire of the Holy Spirit will fall on Bethel in Jesus' name. I thank you, Jesus, that the fire of the Holy Spirit, come on, church, will fall on Bethel in the name of Jesus. New wine, new increase, new spirit, new, new birth in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Jesus, that it will be a rippling effect, Jesus, that healing power will flow in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you, Father. Increase it, Lord. Their best days are ahead in the name of Jesus. Their best days are ahead in the name of Jesus, Lord. I thank you, Lord, like Bill Johnson said, that when we marry, when Jesus' image and Bethel marry, that a revival would hit this nation from the West Coast to the East Coast. And we say yes. We say yes. Come on, church. We say yes in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Oh, mark them, Jesus. Mark them with your glory, Jesus. Wake them up at night, Jesus. Disturb their peace in Jesus' name. With your fire in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, Lord. Let them encounter you in a new way, Jesus. Let them not live on yesterday's encounter, Jesus. Let them go deeper and deeper and deeper, Jesus, when all they can see is you, Jesus. Seal it. Seal it with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let's Thank seal you. it. Seal it with praise. Seal it with praise. Hallelujah. All right, babe, babe. Oh, yeah, isn't the Lord wonderful? Can we give the Lord one more shot of praise? Thank you, Lord. Um, you need to give them just some details about next Sunday morning. Yeah, so Sunday night is staying the same. We'll be here for a while. But Sunday morning, because we are renting at the Sheraton in Maitland, we have a location change next week. That is the address. For next week only, we will be back at our original location in Maitland for the following Sunday. Sunday night stays the same. So if you only come to our Sunday night service, we'll see you here next week. Yeah, but next week, sorry. for Ma sorry. not we will not be at Maitland next week. We will be at this location for next week only. So please. Just for Sunday morning, yeah. For Sunday morning, mm -hmm. yes. So yeah, lastly, also, morning, starting tomorrow, our team is starting a 21-day Daniel Fest. Yeah. I'm not saying, I'm not telling you to do it. I'm inviting you into it. I really feel like we need to get heaven's attention right now and not miss the moment, and it has to be like this violent yes. It can't just be a passive, okay, Lord, thanks for wanting to come. No, this is like I feel uh, the Lord is leading us down this path to put our hearts on the altar. So I'm going to invite uh, you to fast. We're going to do it, Daniel. If you feel led, please join us. But I am asking everybody in the house who's part of the church to fast something. You know, turn your phone off for a little while. Get up to be with Jesus. Whatever you can do to trigger and disturb, I want you to do it, okay? This is going to be an amazing season. These 21 days are going to be charged with God's presence. I love you. I love you. We'll see you next week. Thank you, Jesus.